wine, and you love great food, is What's Cooking on Wine, right here on CRN. Welcome to Divine Love Talk with Dr. Parthenia Grant, where we talk about health, well-being, and the love of the divine that exists in all of us. Now, here's your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant. Welcome. And I'm always delighted to be back here on Divine Love Talk, where today we're going to be looking at how you can navigate the doorway to doubt and discouragement. And I also wanted to uh, answer a couple of questions um, that I got from listeners asking me, um, what is sin and how does God come to be in man? So today, let's see what um, insight we can impart on these questions. Um, I have with me today my co-host, Kim Michaels, joining me via Skype. Kim is our resident expert on spirituality, and I wanted to welcome Kim Michaels. Thank you. Okay. Kim, now what brought up this discussion today was over the weekend um, I had a former student who has a 10-year-old who was considering suicide. And I've dealt with this subject a lot on the college level with older teenagers and young adults. And this whole, you know, dark night of despair is very, very common. But I was really, really surprised to find a 10-year-old saying to me that he felt that life was really meaningless that uh, the world was very, very scary and terrifying for him. And he felt like, what was the point? And then on top of that, school is overwhelming to him uh, because he's in an advanced program and there's way too much homework. Now, I have heard that from um, kids in high school that are very, very that right. are overwhelmed and they feel a lot of pressure. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. So today I wanted to um, – I know you've said before that discouragement is the – what, the sharpest tool in the devil's uh, toolbox? Uh, did tool I say kit. that right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's toolkit. And for all of us on the spiritual path, I think that somewhere along the line, we constantly doubt ourselves. Um, Have you had to deal with this constant self-doubt? And if you have, how do you deal with that? Well, I think we all have to deal with it, you know, on the spiritual path. But as you said, a lot of people in the world who are not particularly spiritual are dealing with it also in this time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually because we are are on the brink of a new era and we have to, in order to move into the new, we have to let go of the old. And we can't let go of the old without looking at it. So that brings up all this doubt, you know. And I think all spiritual people are dealing with that. And personally, the way I've dealt with it over the years is really... Like we talked about last time, I I have for a long time known what I love in life and what I want to do in life. And that pulls you through a lot. And then, of course, I've used the decrees and the invocations to invoke spiritual light so that I keep my own energy field clear. And so I don't have any ties to these very dark mass entities that have been created around suicide and despair and doubt and fear and all this stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I did introduce his mother and his and his dad and uh, the 10-year-old to um, Transcendence Toolbox and um, the invocations that you have. But because he's only 10 years old, even though he's extremely bright, I gave him some very short little um, prayers and invocations yeah. that he could do that he could really relate to. You know, he asked questions, and um, I was just, I think I was um, blown away by the fact that kids at such a young age would even contemplate suicide. And I ask what was the predominant trigger for him that was frightening him so much or making him feel so overwhelmed? And he said that it happened recently when he begged his dad to take him to go see this movie, Annabelle, that has a lot of uh, demonic... um, 
influences in it and the mother was very upset with the father that he listened to the 10 year old and allowed him to go I mean took him to go and see that movie and the father's um argument was that he's got to learn how to be a man and um the mother yeah that's wonderful (laughs) right the mother can't keep coddling him and protecting him from you know what's happening out there in the world so it it was uh pretty challenging and because but because this is a student of mine that i go way back with and i'm you know she's a family friend of mine now and the father respects me um, we were able to get an intelligent dialogue going where he could understand that the kid is still too young and way too impressionable to um, these negative influences to be allowed to go and see these kinds of movies. So what what's your take on... Well, it's not... It's, it's, go ahead. Yeah, it's not just that, that he, he may not be maybe too young, but it's that we aren't really prepared mm-hmm. for this kind of thing. Right. Uh, we grow up in a culture, you know. I mean, I grew up probably in a very similar environment that this long, young child has grown up in, where, yeah, Christianity is somewhere there in the background, and we hear something about the devil, but we don't really get much understanding about mm-hmm. it. And then we have materialistic science that denies that all these things exist. Exactly. And so we grow up not understanding that there are actually dark forces uh, they can't harm us physically but they can certainly influence our emotional and mental bodies Mm -hmm. and that they have an elaborate program set up to trigger us I remember when I was um, I think probably around 8 years old my parents took me to a an excavated monastery here in Denmark you know where um, it was from the middle ages you know Uh and uh, they had dug out the skeletons and the graves and you could see these skeletons lying there and they had rows of shells with uh, skulls that were dug out and I picked up such a vibration of fear from that place that it literally haunted me for years Wow! and I think the same happens with a lot of children and you know what this father was saying is 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 very typical it's like, well, we just have kids have just have to learn to deal with these kind of things. Right. And what they mean with that is you become numb to it. You yes. become insensitive. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but this particular child seems to be typical of a lot of children that are born in this age that are much more sensitive uh, spiritually and in other ways than than our parents' generation were. Right. So this might not have bothered the father when he was exposed to it, but it doesn't mean it won't bother the children. Exactly. Um, and, you know, I you know, was... And, and the problem is... Go ahead. Yeah, the problem is, again, that we were not brought up with an understanding that these forces do exist. And because we don't understand how they work, we don't understand that we can actually protect ourselves from them. Right. So it's like we are thrown out there without any knowledge to protect ourselves. And then we are exposed to this that creates... Because many of these movies, you know, they contain images mm-hmm. that are actually deliberately designed to bypass the rational mind and go into the emotional body and create a reaction there of fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and he was really terrified by it. And, uh, you know, I asked him for specifics, and and he said that he literally um, was having nightmares, and and then when he would wake up from the nightmare, he would see a dark, shadowy figure that was standing in his room. And that was even more terrifying than the dream. And from that place, he started to feel powerless and and helpless. And then it moved into, oh, my home isn't safe, even though we have an alarm system. Um, And and the sense of um, just having no way to protect himself from physical intruders when you listen to the news and then, you know, the whole psychic invasion. And once I was able to explain to him on a spiritual level what this was all about, he was able to wrap his head around it and feel this, you could see the sense of relief in him where he yeah. he felt empowered when I, I told him about Archangel Michael and he could call on Archangel Michael for protection. And he honest, I told him he was an archangel. He had no idea what that was. <laughs> and so I had to explain yeah, right. that. 
I had explained that a little bit. He had heard about angels, but he, he was very clear that, you know, he hears these two voices, you know, one that's, you know, telling him to do the right thing and um, do no harm, and this other voice that's telling him, oh, don't listen to that other voice. So um, I was very impressed that at a at such a young age, he was tuned in to um, what was going on inside of him, which we don't. Well, give I a- think what you're experiencing is is very typical for a lot of spiritual children. I mean, I remember when I was a child, I was also extremely sensitive to energies, yeah. and that had had both aspects. I could sense energies of light, and I could sense energies of darkness. Right. But because I didn't really understand what was going on. It was very easy to get scared of the darkness. And then what happened to me was that as you grow older, you start to understand what's going on in the world. I remember one of the big shocks for me was war. I just could not fathom how I had landed on a planet where there was (laughs) war. Right. You know, it just seems so completely wrong to me. Yeah. And then when I realized that you can't really do anything if another country comes and attacks, you know, Denmark, where I grew up, is a very small country. And there was a very big country to the east of us called the Soviet Union. And right. we couldn't really do much if they decided to attack us. And then you get scared. And it's of the course. same thing with this child. Yeah. He may have sensed energies before. But it was when he started thinking that maybe he couldn't defend himself against mm-hmm. it. That's what uh, leads to the panic. Yeah. And, and you know, it led me to the conclusion that we're really doing our children today a disservice by not teaching them spirituality and by not... Absolutely. Yeah, not giving them background information, you know, just offering them information um, and, and alternative um, ways of, of thinking and dealing with all of the negativity on the planet, we really need to start at a much younger age in giving our children what I consider true spiritual guidance. And we're failing miserably in in that respect in terms of empowering our children. Well, we're not actually failing because we're not even trying. <laughs> and the reason we're not trying is that we are paralyzed. We paralyzed our societies. I mean, take the United States. You know, it, we've got a wonderful constitution. Right. There's no question about it. Yeah. And it does have a right principle in there in the separation of church and state. Mm-hmm. Very, very important. I don't. If you look at the Middle East today, you can say you cannot have a democracy if you don't have a separation between church and state, right. at least not at the present level of the planet. So it's absolutely necessary. But we've taken this to the point where... You are, you are saying we do children a disservice by not teaching them about these principles. But if you try to teach this in the United States, it would be labeled as religion and it would encounter such an opposition that it would be impossible that is, to teach children, at least in a public school. You're absolutely right, and thank you for <laughs> bringing that up because how well do I know this to be true, even on a college level yes. where you're supposed to have academic yeah. freedom to, you know, expose students to all forms of um, teachings and, and critical thinking. Um, so what the conclusion that I've drawn is that parents really need to educate themselves and take responsibility for educating their own children and that's a tremendous task that is um, in front of us. And there, there are no mandatory classes when you become a parent that says you need to learn how to become a parent. You, it's not mandatory that you take child development. Um, so let's talk a right. little bit more about that um, after commercial break. And in the last half hour, we're also going to be looking at, you know, what is sin really? Um, And um, how does one come, how does God or divinity come to be in man? You are listening to Divine Love Talk on CRN. I am your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant. I'm talking with my co-host, Kim Michaels, via Skype um, about how we can navigate the doorway to doubt and discouragement. We will have more on this topic after commercial break. Check out Kim Michaels at TranscendenceToolbox.com. CRN Travelers, relax at the beautiful Fountain Grove Inn and Conference Center in Santa Rosa, California. 
Come to quality and come to luxury. Experience the newly renovated guest rooms. They're generously sized and they're decorated in the Tuscan tradition. They have great, incredible pillow top mattresses, luxurious linens, and down filled comforters. The Found Grove Inn also offers complimentary Wi Fi and internet access. There's warm cookies and coffee every evening in the hotel lobby, and you can visit the newly remodeled Equus Restaurant and Equus Lounge with its new wine bar. It's the ideal place to relax and enjoy a glass of wine and watch our What's Cooking on Wine show on CRN with host Larry Van Alst on Wednesdays. It's the Fountain Grove Inn, Hotel, and Conference Center located in the heart of Sonoma Wine Country. It's easily located in Santa Rosa off the 101 Fountain Grove Parkway exit. Call 707-578-6101. That's 707-578-6101 or visit FountainGroveInn.com. I'm Aileen Ellis. This is Primetime Focus. Here's good news. The survey showed that there was a greater number of seniors setting health goals and exercising daily. The United States of Aging survey has just come out. On the exercise front, that was gauged by exercising 30 minutes or more every day, jumped from last year of 26% to 37%. Survey expert Sandy Markwood. Those people who had set health goals had a much more optimistic outlook about their overall quality of life and their health. If you don't have a regular exercise routine, watch the exercise videos on AARP's YouTube channel. What if you fell? Could you get up? Are you losing strength? We can fix that. Strength training and regular exercise is one of the best ways to maintain bone mass and prevent osteoporosis. Just doing a few modified push-ups performed by the expert in the video can make a big difference. That's Primetime Focus brought to you by AARP. Hear all our programs on the web at aarp.org slash radio. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D., host of Healthline. Join me live to get your questions answered and hear the latest breakthrough information for you and your family. Our product line, Quantum Nutrition Labs, delivers what others only promise, nutrition that really works. This month, our DHA 200 is on special. This pristine microalgae source of docosahexanoic acid, an essential fatty acid, is the purer, cleaner form of DHA. It delivers great brain, nerve, eye, and heart support. From babies in the womb all the way to the elderly, just about everyone really needs to supplement DHA in order to enjoy best health. Buy two bottles, get the third one free. Call 800-370-3447. That's 800-370-3447. Experience nutrition that really works. Listen to Healthline daily at 2.30 p.m. Pacific, 5.30 p.m. Eastern on CRN. Hey, we're back with more of Divine Love Talk on CRN. I am your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant, and joining me is my co-host, Kim Michaels, via Skype. Today we're talking about navigating the doorway to doubt and discouragement, and in particular, a parent's responsibility to educate their children at home because of, um, Kim, you mentioned the restraints that are being put upon teachers at school about exposing children to different viewpoints on spirituality. So, Kim, I Yeah, go, and go uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's an unfortunate situation all over the Western world. Uh, it's, it's almost like the more... The more sophisticated we think we have become, the more stupid we have become in terms of teaching <laughs> these simple things. You yeah. know that that people in more, in what we call primitive societies know about and have known about for centuries. And I really think the only way that this is really going to change is pressure from below. That people stand up and say, you know, we're not going to allow this uh, three hundred year old war between science and religion to influence our kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we demand that the scientific apparatus be uh, redirected to actually investigate consciousness. Right. And I think if you was, there are already scientists that have started this. There are quite a few on. I don't know. Have you read um, the book by Dan Brown called Angels and Demons? Gee, what's it called now? Angels and no, Demons. No, no, it's not that. No, it's uh, the Lost Symbol. Oh, the, of course, I've read all of his books. Yeah. Absolutely. And in that book, he talks about noetic science, and he mm-hmm. talks about how scientists have uh, started to investigate consciousness. And I thought it was really interesting that a book that has sold so many millions of copies mm-hmm. would talk about these quite advanced topics. Well, I was, and I think that's that's a hope. 
Yeah, I was impressed. And um, next week I'm going um, to Ramtha School for Enlightenment. And the, the, what fascinates me, you know, they, they're the ones who sponsor that um, documentary, What the Bleep Do We Know, on quantum physics. Right. And their, their teachings have everything to do with quantum physics um, and enlightenment and spirituality, which is quite fascinating for me. And on, on this next phase of my journey, it's all about me learning more about how I can heal my own mind and body from a quantum level. Um, that there's nothing more important to me at this point in my journey. Right. And that is that is a very important topic. Uh, Bruce Lipton has written mm-hmm. a couple of books about this and yeah. how there is consciousness present at the level of the cells. Yeah. And basically, if you look at the reality of the latest uh, scientific developments, we cannot scientifically continue to ignore consciousness. It is the most important topic to research. And this is what <laughs> will bring bring us to the point where we can look at some of these negative effects on children just from a purely neutral objective. We we don't have to say that this is religion because we talk about uh, spirits in another realm that can influence people in this realm. This is not religion. Mm -hmm. This is a universal knowledge, you know, that transcends individual religions. I agree. And and I think, Kim, when you get to the level of quantum physics, you have bypassed religion and, and you've encompassed everything um, because so much of a religion is about dogma. And I think that when you move into spirituality, it's a step up in that it's acknowledging that we have a spiritual nature and then you can move into quantum physics. And I personally think that um, people can learn more in two and a half hours of watching what the bleep do we know about quantum physics than they could from studying it for three years because it's there's so much information in that documentary that is just, I think, kind of basic quantum physics 101 that I know opened my mind to so many other teachings and I ex- of course expose my students to that documentary and they all feel the same way. So I think that I would recommend to parents out there that that's a really really good place to start is getting a copy of What the Bleep Do We Know and sitting down with your kids and watching it over and over and over again. I've watched it over a hundred times and I still learn <laughs> more every time I watch it and watch that documentary. It's not that good, (laughs) Pathina. I'm serious. It is. (laughs) Okay. Uh, We'll have more on uh, the topic of navigating the doorway to doubt and discouragement when we come back after commercial break. You're listening to Divine Love Talk and my co-host, Kim Michaels. I am your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant. Located in the heart of Maui's premier resorts, Kanapali Beach Hotel is officially recognized as Hawaii's most Hawaiian hotel and the number one best value in Hawaii. With a range of accommodations and affordable dining options, this is the ideal setting to turn Hawaiian dreams into lifelong memories. Live Hawaiian entertainment every evening, free year-round children's programs, weekly arts and crafts fairs, welcome breakfast, and departure kukui lei ceremonies add to the value. Swim in the whale-shaped pool, indulge in the family the spa and hotel salon. Enjoy Hawaiian hospitality at its best at the Kaanapali Beach Hotel. Call 800-262-8450 or go to kbhmaui.com. That's kbhmaui.com. Aloha. Kaanapali Beach Hotel, Maui's Hawaiian Hotel. If you want to get ahead financially, you've got to do anything you can to save money. 
But if you're hit with an unexpected car repair bill, you could be facing thousands in expenses. Not anymore. If you own a car, truck, or SUV with less than 150,000 miles, you could stop paying for repairs ever again. I repeat, you may not even pay a penny to have your car repaired ever. Call now to see if you qualify. 1-800-976-7960. You must have a car, truck, or SUV with less than 150,000 miles, and all repair bills can cost you nothing, not even one penny. Call now to get your car protected before you're hit with another repair bill. Transmissions cost $2,500. Simple onboard computers. $1,800. But for you, they can cost nothing. Call now to get your car protected. The first 50 callers get free roadside assistance with their total protection. Call now. 1-800-976-7960. That's 1-800-976-7960. 1-800-976-7960. What's your IRS problem? Do you owe back taxes? Is there a lien placed on your property? Have your bank accounts been frozen or seized? Have your wages been garnished? Are you being audited by the IRS? Are they sending you letters that demand actions and have urgent due dates? Well, solving your tax problems is as easy as calling Taxes 321. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. You need the best representation to give you peace of mind. You need experienced professionals that can cut through the red tape and stop the collection process. If you have a serious problem with the IRS, call the Taxes 321 Network today. We'll get them off your back. 800-511-3022. It's time to earn your MBA at DeVry University's Keller Graduate School of Management. Keller professors share real-world experience so students graduate ready to advance in their careers. Get started with our Merit-Based Career Catalyst Scholarship with up to $8,000 for new students who qualify. Classes start October 27th. Full details at keller.edu slash scholarships. For students who qualify and start by November 2014, subject to approval and availability of funds, DeVry University is authorized for operation by the THEC, certified to operate by CHEV. In New York, DeVry University operates at DeVry College of New York. Nothing says I love you. I'm thinking about you or I miss you like a beautiful bouquet of fresh flowers from proflowers.com flowers are a festive way to dress up a birthday holiday or anniversary plus prices start at $19.99 and include a free vase every bouquet is guaranteed to last at least seven days to send a thoughtful bouquet go to proflowers.com slash radio and to receive this special offer enter code daisy that's proflowers.com slash radio code daisy okay we're back with more divine love talk CRN, where we, <clears throat> we're discussing how we can navigate the doorway to uh, doubt and, let's see, what was the, the word we're using, discouragement. And in this half hour, we're going to be looking at um, what sin is and how God comes to be in man. Um, Kim, I'd like to open up with a quote from Eugene Whitworth, um, author of The Nine Faces of Christ. It's a fascinating book about the mystery schools that Christ um, studied in and all of the initiations that he had to go through. And he says, in, in, in regards to what is sin, he says that the only sin is that which stops man's eventual union with God. And that the greatest sin is to doubt your divinity because doubt of self and your ability is the handhold of the deep night of despair. Uh, what are your thoughts on that quote, Kim? Yeah, that's a good concept to bring out. Um, I would say that if you if take it a little bit further, okay. you know, the concept of sin that has very, very carefully been programmed into our minds by the false teachers and the yes. dark forces mm -hmm. is that once you have committed a sin, you can't get out of it on your own. Right. And, and this is what gives rise to the doubt and to the despair because right. you are afraid that you could have done something in the past that you can't undo. Mm -hmm. And that for that matter, no force can undo. Right. You might even be afraid that God can't even save you for it. And, and look at the but, guilt. Uh, the, the, thing is, the thing is, why are we capable of doing something that can be labeled as a sin? 
is because we have free will. Right. There is nothing we could do with our free will that could take away our free will. It was mm. given to us by God. Right. So you can make a choice that has consequences. Right. But there is no choice you could make that could take away your freedom to choose to change those consequences, to transcend your past tr choices. You can always overcome a past choice by making a new choice. Mm -hmm. But this is, of course, what uh, the false teachers have very carefully tried to program into us. So we start doubting this. Yeah. And, and once you think, <clears throat> I, could, I could have done something I can't undo, mm -hmm. then you have the opening. Exactly. And and we're also taught to believe that in certain situations that you have no choice, that your free will has literally been taken away from you. And probably the foremost example that comes to mind is when a person, let's say, is falsely imprisoned or falsely accused of something and they, they lose their freedom – um, that kind of situation could, you know, logically lead a person to believe that they have no power and they have no choice and they have no control. But I have found that not to be true in talking to students of mine and different people and, and history right. shows that you do have choices. So I'd like for you to elaborate on the choices that we could have in very um, – stressful situations like the one I just mentioned? Well, I think there's an important distinction to be made here between what happens in the physical world mm -hmm. and what happens beyond in, in the emotional and mental realms. Okay. We've talked about dark forces that have an aggressive intent to attack you, right? Right. But the thing is, they disembodied forces, whether it's whatever you call them, mm -hmm. demons or the devil, they cannot harm you directly. They cannot override your free will. Okay. They have to deceive you in order to get an inroad into your mind. Right. On the physical level, of course, there are people who can come up to you and kill you or imprison you and those kind of things. Right. But the thing is, if you really understand the spiritual reality, you will know that you have lived before in a past life. Yeah. And whatever happens to you, if these kind of events happen to you in this life, it is a result of something you have done in a previous life where you may have done the same to other people or you may in other ways have created karma for yourself. Right. And that means you still have the option to even protect yourself from this. And this is what the Ascended Masters teach here is that if you did something in a past life, then it takes time for that karmic return to come into the physical. And that means you can actually, if you transcend the consciousness and you invoke spiritual light, you can actually mitigate the karmic return before it becomes physical. Right. So we always have choices. And people uh, are not aware that they can um, mitigate their, their karma through the, the law of grace and, as you said, literally overcoming the mindset or the belief that puts you in that place um, to begin with, that all it really takes is understanding, oh, wow, that is the limiting belief that I have not mastered. And once I you just switch that belief to a higher level of thinking, then I can transcend that karma. I, when I ran across that in one of your books, I, I was literally just blown away with that because I thought that is so true because I've experienced those shifts in consciousness where there's no more worry, there's no more guilt, there's no more stress behind something that I thought was a mistake that I had made or that I was being stuck at, at a certain level. Yeah, and it has been very, very deeply programmed into our minds for a very, very long time that there is an angry God in the sky. And if we make a mistake or commit a sin, this God wants to punish us. Right. This is a complete fabrication from the dark forces. Right. The, the true God only wants one thing, and it is for us to be free from the consciousness that caused us to do whatever we did. Right. God realizes this is not who we are. We have just taken on a temporary self that caused us to do something in reaction to whatever else is going on on the earth. But we are more than this, and we can be free of this by choosing to transcend that consciousness. 
Well, you know, I have another quote from uh, that goes right along with what you just said from Eugene uh, Whitworth from The Nine Faces of Christ, where he said man's morality has to do with ideas that control man's actions and are concerned with man's relationship to man, not with man's relationship to God. So he said, don't tell me that God is concerned with man's relationship to man. Do that and you lower God to the status of a slave. You may sin when you break a moral code, but not because you break break it. You sin only if you let your thoughts cause you to stop in your struggle toward total uh, union with divine radiance. When you have reached such a stage that you can do anything without being sidetracked into the attitude of negation, it is impossible to sin. I thought that quote was really, really deep, and I'm not saying that I really completely have wrapped my head around it, but it makes sense to me. Oh, I agree totally with it. I mean, it, it is the most important relationship we have is our relationship with our source, with God, mm-hmm. which includes our higher self. And uh, what has happened on earth is that, you know, the dark forces have come in and trying to insert themselves between us and God. Yeah. And if we allow them to do this, this is, in a sense, the only sin we can commit, because that is when we then think we can we cannot come home to God. Right. We cannot just choose to abandon what we have done here on earth and come home to God. And uh, that's that's what they want us to believe, that once you've made a certain mistake, you're stuck forever, and God won't accept you. God won't take you back. Yeah. But God is a God of unconditional love. Yeah. The angry God in the sky that has been preached for thousands of years by the monotheistic religions is just a fabrication. Yeah, and, and I never really understood how people could reconcile, you know, that dichotomy of God being love and unconditional love and forgiveness, but punishing you forever more um, in purgatory or in hell. You know, even when I was 12 years old and reading the Bible, that made absolutely no sense to me. And it also made me no, think... No, but see, this this is the deliberate plot to cast us into the hands of doubt and discouragement. Right. It is to give us an image of God that is contradictory, that is inconsistent. Mm-hmm. We can't make sense of it, but we think because it's spoken by all these people who have authority, it should make sense. There must be something wrong with us because it doesn't make sense. Right. Well, and, you know, the other um, trick that I think has been played upon us that has worked really well is, on the one hand, um, the scriptures do say that, and pretty much every religious teaching that I've studied says that God was made in the image and likeness of man. And then when you look at Christ's teachings, you know, he says, these things I do, even greater things, you know, you can do. And that whole sense of divinity, you know, that we are divine, um, is in all of the spiritual and religious teachings in the world. And yet, um, somehow, we don't seem to have embodied that concept or wrapped our heads around that. And I think that that's the, the work that we need to do at this next level, which brings me to my last quote um, from Eugene, what is his name, Whitworth from the Nine Faces of Christ, where he says that divinity comes not by divine grace alone, but by the development of the God self within to reach touch and be absorbed in the eternal energy, which is God. Your development of divinity is not up to God. It is up to you. He gave you the seed. You must grow the fruit. So I'd I'd like your um, comment on that quote. Yeah, well, this is very consistent with uh, what your center masters are saying through me. We we started out with a very point-like sense of self. And this happened, in our case, on Earth many lifetimes ago. And uh, then our task is to expand that sense of self uh, until we can accept that the self was created out of God's own being. And we are an extension of the Creator. We are all sons and daughters of God. Jesus said this, ye are gods. Right. And that's the, that's the one truth that <clears throat> has been hidden. But, but the reason why we have become susceptible to this is that there came a point in the past where... 
those of us who are still in embodiment, uh, we, we thought we wanted to experience what it was like to be a separate being. Mm -hmm. And so when you start out, you have a certain connection, that, you know, a sense of connection with something beyond yourself. And the temptation that was symbolized in the Garden of Eden story where the serpent said to Eve that if you eat this fruit, you will become as a God knowing good and evil, that symbolizes the, the state of separation right. where we see ourselves not as connected beings but as separate beings. And that means we can do things that we can't do as connected beings. Mm -hmm. Every religion on the world says, do unto others what you want them to do unto you. Right. This is recognizing we are connected. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, what you see happening in the world is that people do things and they think they can get away with doing this and ignoring how it affects other people. Well, and so this is what made us vulnerable to the dark forces. Okay. And this is what we haven't yet overcome, that denial of our connection, our oneness. Well, and I, I think coming back to the discussion at the beginning of the show about young people, kids, 10-year-olds that are, you know, in such states of despair and feeling that life is meaningless and that this is such an unsafe place to live, I think so much of it has to do with not teaching our children that they are connected to divinity and that there is a power that is greater than themselves and that is greater than the dark darkness and the negativity and the craziness and chaos that we see on the planet and that they can plug into that at any time through meditation, through prayer, through invocations. Um, and that is what well, I know for myself. It has been such an amazing um, form of empowerment. And without those tools, I would not have been able and would not continue to be able to navigate the sea of samsara as buddha calls it you know all these troubled waters and i think it's imperative yeah and i think what that we teach it to our you know, children what's happening in this age is that we have a lot of children that are taking embodiment who are more advanced they have started to overcome this separateness the mm -hmm. sense of separateness and they've started to build a sense that all life is connected right. and of course they also feel uh, that we are we are connected to our source i know i was that, that way as a child i mm -hmm. i already had a sense of the oneness of all life and a sense of connection yes this was what i was born with right but then when i saw how the world works and how pre people actually treated each other yeah it was such a shock to me yeah that i started doubting am i wrong mm -hmm. because if people are behaving like this where is god how could we <laughs> all be connected you yeah. know and yeah and all these kind of questions that come in so i think what happens is we go through an enormous existential trauma mm -hmm. that we are not prepared to deal with as children yeah and as a result of that most people deny their spirituality yeah. Now, in my case, I was fortunate. I just couldn't deny it. I had to keep searching for yeah. something that would give me a great understanding. You are the same. Many, yeah. many, fortunately, millions of people are like that. But it's often a very big struggle for us. And just like you said, when we do find a teaching that makes us realize that our childlike innocence was right, then we can't help but wish, oh, I wish I had... I have had this teaching when right. I was 10 years old, and I wish all children would have it. Right. Well, and, and when we I obviously want to... Go ahead. Yeah, we want, we want to save our own children and other children from going through the trauma that we went through. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is through knowledge. Well, and that's what, what I told my, my student when she asked me, okay, so what can I do and where do I start? Because she, she told me, she said, I'm already feeling like um, that it's not enough. She's finished her master's and, you know, she knows that the next step is for her to work on spirit. And I told her, well, you can benefit from all these years that I've put into my spiritual journey um, and right. not reinvent the wheel. Um, we will be back with more of Divine Love Talk after commercial break. You're listening to um, Dr. Parthenia Grant and my co-host, Kim Michaels. You can check me out at drparthenia.com and Kim Michaels at transcendencetoolbox.com.
Come to Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante in Fullerton, California for our sizzling fall savings. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's and celebrate in one of our festive banquet rooms and receive free pizza hors d'oeuvres for all your guests and use of our holiday centerpieces free of charge. Call for all the details. And don't forget our daily lunch and our dinners, which include new menu items such as our fried raviolis and fresh garlic salmon, plus our Sunday champagne brunch, just $14.95. It includes minestrone soup, sausage and peppers, pastas, chicken dishes, salads, scones and muffins, a chocolate fondue fountain, Zeppelin's cookies, fresh fruit, champagne, and Junior's going to be waiting to make the omelet of your choice from our omelet bar. Angelo's and Vinci's has been voted on the Orange County Hot List, one of the top five Italian restaurants for the past six years. And don't forget our award-winning pizzas. It's all at Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante at 550 North Harbor Boulevard in Fullerton. Call 714-879-4022. 714-879-4022. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-881-1672. 800-881-1672. 800-881-1672. Call right now. 800-881-1672. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Chuck Wilder here, host of the original Talk Back. Noon to 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time, 3 to 5, out there on the East Coast. You know, we cover everything you need to know to keep up with what they don't want you to know. Talk Back, CRN, Digital Talk. Noon to 2, Pacific Daylight Savings Time. Wrapping this, wrapping up this discussion on navigating the doorway uh, to doubt and discouragement, I am talking with my co-host Kim Michaels. Kim, um, our discussion up to this point has led me to the fact that parents are going to have to take personal responsibility for teaching their children spiritual principles in America because of all of the backlash against uh, spirituality in this country, which was supposed to be such a, um, you know, it's founded on such beautiful dreams and hopes of uh, freedom. Of freedom, and it's one of the least free countries in the world, um, I have found. Um, and an alternative for parents is to create private schools. And to, I just came back from Ananda Village um, in Northern California, where the entire village is based on the principles of Paramahansa Yogananda, and they have this amazing school there. I talked to the teachers and the students there. It goes K through 12, and they also have a university that's based on spiritual principles, and um, it reminded me, the K through 12 reminded me of the principles that Maria Montessori used. Uses and that Krishnamurti schools right. are based on its holistic learning where the children participate in learning and everything that they learn has some type of practical application and, and their learning responsibility and they take joy in learning and they integrate play at, at every level of the learning process and in talking to the teachers there they were so much like me I was like wow how amazing is this to run across teachers that 
you know, I never knew existed who have the same loving principles that I've used as a teacher. So I would like to encourage parents to check out the Ananda Village School and Montessori and other schools that are based on spiritual principles, not necessarily religious dogma, um, as alternatives for their children. Uh, Kim, what suggestions do you have? Because we are dealing with an epidemic of, you know, uh, suicide in young people, and now I'm seeing that it's starting at a much earlier age. Yeah, and I think it's just a matter of the parents or those who care about the children knowing a few basic universal spiritual principles and then teaching that to the children. I don't think it has to be horrendously complicated no. it just has to be but but it's thing the, the the parents have to integrate it themselves they yes. have to believe it themselves yes. so that they they don't just teach it like a teacher in school but right. they really give or pass on to the children the, the sense of reality of this that their parents really believe in it yeah they have to embody it i i think because the today's kids cannot they will not deal with hypocrisy you know if you you can't talk talk the talk with with today's kids and not walk the walk Right. Okay. Well, I want to thank you, Kim Michaels, for joining us. And thank you. Um, I want to thank the audience and um, join us next week for more of Divine Love Talk. Um, I will be at Ramtha School for Enlightenment, um, and I will have Dr. Sarah Larson sitting in in my place next week. And we'll see you the week after. Thank you for joining us on Divine Love Talk on CRG. sound like this what if you could hear your favorite shows in crystal clear high definition digital sound well with crn digital talk radio six channels of high definition radio you can now hear all of your favorite hosts like you've never heard them before in crn hd the difference is amazing catch your favorite political hosts like dennis prager tom hartman barry farber and so many more entertainment and lifestyle programming like the robert conrad show the what's cooking show and the what's cooking on wine show all in true crn